Every episode of the podcast is brought to you by Bill Fick Ford and the WCRA. Thank you to Train Shot. Guys, Bill Fick Ford is the number one Super Duty dealer in the country for the fourth year in a row. You guys have heard me rant and rave about Bill Fick Ford for the absolute best buying experience in the car industry, truck industry. Bill Fick Ford's the place to go. I bet you remember the old ad where I said I was getting a new Super Duty. Well, here's the keys for that. Bill Fick Ford delivers, guys. No bull discounts, no bull interest rates, the best buying experience you can get. And if you are not local to Huntsville or the Houston area, he'll deliver it to you just like he did to me. Bill Fick Ford. If I say, who wants to be a millionaire? Would anybody not put their hand up? Of course not, especially in rodeo. Well, thanks to the WCRA, the dream of a $1 million purse has finally come true. You can win $1 million by nominating your rides and runs and earning points with the WCRA. Through the Triple Crown of Rodeo, the WCRA will award a $1 million cash prize to any athlete or collection of athletes who wins first place in any three consecutive WRC, WCRA major rodeos. $1 million up for grabs, which is pretty much unheard of. Rodeo Corpus Christi will be the very first stop in the 2021 Triple Crown of Rodeo. The event will pay over $540,000. Yes, I said it, $545,000 and will be held on May 6th through May 9th. There will be zero entry fees. That's right. You don't even have to pay to enter this rodeo. The only thing you have to do to qualify for the Triple Crown of Rodeo event is by nominating your rides or runs with the WCRA. Here's the common misconception with the WCRA. It's just for the pros, for the elites. Well, if you can hang with these people, but maybe... Maybe you don't want to commit to pro rodeo. I get it. I get it. It's a big commitment. The WCRA is made for people like you because you can enter these events, nominate your rodeos, and win crazy money, just like Rodeo Corpus Crispy and this million dollars we keep talking about. To learn more, just visit triplecrownofrodeo.com. Again, that's triplecrownofrodeo.com to see how you can earn a spot at Rodeo Corpus Crispy and possibly be the rodeo's next millionaire. Pow! Guys, if you're like me, you are hoarding your guns and ammo right now. We don't know what the heck is going on. Here's the thing. You can't get ammo, so the last thing you want to do is train and use up your ammunition. But, of course, on the flip side, you've got to train if you want to be effective with your arms. That's where our partner, TrainShot, comes in. They've created a seamless app and device that allows you to shoot and improve your skills. No tapes required. No spotting scopes required. No wasted time downrange. You will also save a ton of money using train shot because you don't use the same amount of ammunition and supplies that you would with traditional targets. The app is designed specifically to save you time and of course the ammunition we keep referencing. You can track your speed, your improvements over time, draw time, reaction time, shot specific recovery time, how badly you can beat your buddies because that's one of the best parts. You can compete across the United States with anybody who has a training shot or specifically with your friends. Guys, this is one of the funnest ways to drill and shoot. The ammunition savings alone covers the cost of the unit itself. And of course, all you have to do is download the simple app. Train shot is one of my favorite products for 2021. Get yours today. Go to trainshot.com. Again, that's trainshot.com. And here's what's great. If you get this from the gauge, use their promo code for a special treat. Use promo code free ammo to get one box. That's 50 rounds of nine millimeter mag tech, 115 grain FMJs. And these aren't cheap reloaded junk guys. This is good stuff. Again, that promo code is free ammo at trainshot.com when you purchase your train shot. This is The Gage with host Chance Conradu. Are you freaking serious? It's Conrado. This is The Gage, and I am Chance Conrado on this episode of the podcast. We've got part one of Adrian Bronnett. Adrian has been on the show The Voice. Uh, she's a singing sensation. She's also an author. She's got a great story. A good following on social media. She's just a downright cool person. Uh, I encourage you guys to listen to this episode in full. Part one, it's the gauge effery. It, it really is. We just goof off. It was a great time. But part two, she gets into a little bit, um, a little bit more of the depth that uh, that her followers have kind of come to admire and her books are about. She's got a very colored past and has come through it. So it's definitely worth a listen. Part one, all fun. Part two, also fun, but. You know, there's some serious stuff in there. Check it out. Because I got, oh, there we are. Now we're on. Now we sound right. Ooh. 
So, oh, this is exciting. It's better. You're in my head again. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> because then you can tell if you're being too loud or too quiet. I'm always too loud. Yeah. Always too loud. No, I can tell. Yeah. That's not a bad thing, though. <laughs> we it's just fun. met, man. You don't have to insult me right off the bat. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> one of my things. I don't have a filter. So uh, he has no filter. I'm going to say, I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. I am, that's too. That's great. I have coffee. Here's the thing. It's not an insult if you like that type of person. It's actually if a compliment. You, if you like loud people. Yeah, if you like loud people. People with high energy, that's a compliment. That is very true. By the way, we didn't cheers yet, and that's like a thing. No, you, but, but you there's have to vodka in this, and that's just coffee, so it feels weird. No, it's you have to cheers. You always have to cheers. That's a really feminine cup. It's a shaker. Cup. Yeah, it it's is. It's a shake. What, 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 what kind of cup do? are you drinking Why is there a little the bunny on it, though? That's Dude, the branding. that is really girly. But your masculinity just, like, tanked. It's the branding of the shaker I got. And it's so misleading because you're not a gym guy. I don't know why you have a shaker cup. That was that was a deep insult. He takes he yeah. takes an aggressive gulp. Yeah. He did, and now he's just, that was a really aggressive gulp. Fingers, he's upset. No. I'm just saying, like, there's a if you're a gym bro, those serve a specific purpose. You don't have a mute button, right? If you're if you're the rock, you could take that into the gym and be like super super cool with yourself because you're like this big scary Samoan dude with a pink drink. But dude, like. A little bunny on the side. I mean, the little bunny on the side. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to so join the, him. All right, that's not my fault. That's just the branding of the cup. Dude, like, we got to get you a more macho cup. Well, I have a second one. It's in the wash. Mm. But it has a little chipmunk, that one. No, that one does not have a chipmunk on it. You should just, like, get like get one with a naked chick on it, and then it'd be super manly. <laughs> be, like, toxic masculinity walking around. <laughs> oh, we can't have that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm, Yeah. Ty, you would throw people off with a little toxic masculinity. People wouldn't expect that out of you. That toxic, would be a fun thing. Tox, toxic masculinity. masculinity. It's hard to say that. It is. Say it yeah. five times fast. No. Yeah. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. That was impressive. That was, All right, that was very like impressive. That, that's the only thing I can say. Yeah, that was like Mary like Poppins on a bunch of coffee. Yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a super thing. It's bad. Well, turn turn that, your phone on silent. That turn nice. that bad boy off. Some people don't. <laughs> it's really funny because we had somebody in here and... Uh, their phone kept ringing and ringing. And they happened to be in here because we were discussing the, the D.C. rally. Okay. Because they were there. On December 6th or yeah. January 6th? Yes. Really? Who was it, if I can ask? Uh, I mean, it's, you could listen to it. There's an episode. Her name was Ryan Padone and the other oh. gal's name was Kelly Allen. Oh, my gosh. They were there, really? They were there. And so oh my gosh. Uh, we were like, you guys should come by the studio so we can talk about yeah. this. And so they did immediately. Oh, that's awesome. And she was, like, making jokes about, uh, I wouldn't be scared if the – what did she say? Like, yeah. Uh, you know, the FBI can call me all they want. Yeah. Until live on the show, the FBI called her. I haven't they seen... They were at her house. I what s- in the damn hell? Are you serious? Yes. I haven't seen was- someone have such a 180 right away. I mean, because Ryan Padone, she's a national finals rodeo bell racer, okay. all that stuff. What was she doing there? Was she, like, did she plan to go... She's like mega patriot. Really? Like, she's going to run for office for sure. Sweet. She's, Good she's for her. She's super intelligent, okay. but... Uh, yeah, she's more passionate about politics, and she has barrel horses, to give you an idea. I can, I can get on board with that. Yeah, but she was kind of, you know, dick swinging a little bit. She was tough until the actual FBI was in her driveway while she was the, here recording a podcast. But see, that's such a thing, too. Like, guys do that all the time with fighting. I always love that. Like, you can tell a guy that's been in a fight before. Oh, I'll kick that guy's ass. The first time that somebody actually punches you in the face, like, like... Oh, like I love seeing guys that haven't ever fought be like, oh my God, like you hit me. Like, oh, it's like, dude, you talk such a big game. Wait, you hit him? I've hit people before, but it always just, that's always like, that's what always kind of cracks me up. It's like, everybody's a big talker until it comes down to the minute. And if then, you've ever been in fights, it's like the loudmouth guy you learn is like, that's the safe bet. That's a safe bet. That's like, yeah, that every, every cliche about like the, the, Short guys, you know, that, that whole deal. Yeah. I'm always like, I, I, I'll bet on the short, angry guy every time. Cause they probably had to be in fights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody has a different definition of what short is though. That's true. I feel, I feel like I'm short. I was thinking you were tall. Really? Yeah, How I'm tall are you? Girl. I'm not saying all I'm <laughs> He's shorter than me. How yeah. tall are you? I'm like 5'11". Yeah. I'm not very tall. I'm five nine and a half. I feel like I used to be taller, actually. I feel like, like. You're already shrinking? Yeah. It's probably all the coffee. Compression fractures, yeah. I think I, I screwed up my back like over a decade ago. You're supposed to hang sure. upside down to kind of keep that from happening. 
Every time I hang upside down at the bar, they get upset. <laughs> they kick me out. That's different. Especially the bars in Heiko. <laughs> Actually, I haven't been to a bar in Heiko except for the Chop House. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if there's a standalone I don't know. bar in Heiko. I don't spend time in bars anyway. So You're not a bar person? No, I'm not a bar no, person. No, I offered you alcohol and you asked for coffee. Probably not. Well, I, I, you know, I like a drink on occasion. I like several drinks on occasion, but yeah. I'm I drank actually, some wine last night, actually. And it was delightful. Yeah, we had a bass yeah. guitarist in here drinking a lot of wine last night. A lot night. of, our whole bottle. <laughs> he drank an entire bottle of wine. Wait, so you had somebody drinking wine and Tito's last night? Two different people, but yes. Oh my gosh. Yes to both. Oh, so you had wine drunk and, wow. We had three people drunk. Wow. Yeah. If you can think of uh, his manager, his music manager was here. Okay. I don't know, whatever you call him. His bass, his bass player was here. Look just like a bass player, bald, okay. pure bass player. I play bass, t-shirt. If you, nice. patch. If you soul patch. If you Ooh. imagine a bass yeah, player, literally, <laughs> it's that guy. Okay. So yeah. all the cliches. It's all, about, literally, all the cliches. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was hilarious because, you know. Did he, did he, okay, did he show up intoxicated? Or did he just progressively become intoxicated? I mean, they walked in here like straight up rock stars. I'll give them that. Nice. And we're, they were, they pulled the rock star thing and got absolutely shit faced on the show. <laughs> so, so much so we were like, Okay. Hey guys, well, so we're gonna take this that. mic away. <laughs> I'm gonna slow this down, and it takes a lot here for it to be like, okay, time to pump the brakes. Really? Yeah. Normally, it's someone calling me unsolicited, saying, "Hey, I want my kids to listen to you, but you say fuck too much." Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see that being a problem. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, nah, you know, I get it. I'm gonna try to work on it. God but then damn it! Like, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> it's, it's it's like pulling in two different re directions. Yeah. right? it's like because you want to be real and unfiltered. Do I want to be real and authentic, or do I want to appease someone in Utah I've never met? It's hard to appeasing people that out. in Utah is very difficult. Having lived there, I'll just say like that. Mm -mm, that's hard to do in certain demographics. The Mormon demographics. Yeah. Which they were. We've had a lot of people from that lived in Utah on this podcast. There's really? a lot of people from Utah. Yeah. Surprisingly. Especially on this podcast. Well, it's one of those places that like it's a great place to live if you're Mormon, I'm sure. If you're not Mormon, I couldn't even get my, my truck worked on at one point. Like Really? Yeah. What like, part of Utah? North northeastern Utah. Northeastern corner. Mm. And what, if, what if you just don't mention it and you just walk in there like, well, maybe I'm Mormon, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm a I think they Scientologist. Can, I think, maybe you don't know what I am. No, sense. nobody knows what I am. I don't think, I think they can feel that I don't want to be their seventh wife. So it like <laughs> offends them. And, and I think they can feel the like the aura of get your child away from me kind of thing. Huh. <laughs> maybe that's At the what time, it is. That might be it. Have you stiff armed <laughs> children in the past? Probably an accident just because I'm scared. Of ch of kids? A little bit. Sometimes, yeah. I'm really like, I'm nervous. I'm going to do something wrong. Like, they're very delicate looking. Man, but so are like puppies. And puppies are so cute though. <laughs> children. That's, we puppies don't talk about kids anymore. Like really well. She said puppies are so cute though, implying that children are not cute. I don't think we need to talk children, about kids no, anymore. Children, children are cute. I really like being able to hand them back to people. Like enjoy yeah. them, have fun with them, and then give them back, and yeah. then go do what I want, and yeah. you know, sleep. I like dogs, but I don't love puppies. It's the same thing. Yes, that's a very good analogy. I like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Puppies piss everywhere and chew on things. I really just like want my my mom to potty train the puppy and then hand it to me so that I can take it and. You know what's the best though? My a, mom's really good. <laughs> a kitten. No, because you can you can get them. Yeah, you can get them trained real quick. Easily. So you're drinking a pink drink. Oh. You have a a uh. bunny on it, and you just mentioned a kitten. Yeah. Guys, stop! I'm stop confused. This. What? Ty, I'm trying to rebuild you, dude, here for our audience for saying. 2021. I'm just saying. I'm trying to build you up a into cat. a different model. No, dude. I'm sorry. Cats are cats are a no go. Remember when we put the suit jacket and the cowboy hat on at the NFR? That was our launching off point for Ty 2.0. Oh, did you did you dress him up? I mean, I let him borrow a cowboy hat. Okay. And then he put the rest on, and it just okay. kind of worked for him. Uh -huh. But now we're regressing to kittens. I'm just saying. You guys talk about babies and puppies. Is the is My Little Pony going to be next? Do you want some no. stickers for the back of your computer? No. See, she comes in nice. <laughs> and I mean, this, happens on, this happens on every episode with Ty. <laughs> She's getting, is he opens up these <laughs> massive gates for people to walk through to insult them. I mean, him. it's, it's, it's kind of right there. You just like, you just really just sweetly saying. brought up kittens, dude. I'm just saying, if you want, when you're talking about puppies, you're and the great babies, American male. Like, embrace it, go with it. Like, be, you know, uh, 
Yeah. Manly. Uh, like You're the world wearing a me. bareback riding hoodie, for God's sake. Yeah, what hoodie are you wearing? Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do they come in pink? <laughs> if, I don't he, if he puts a pair of his red panties in there with it, it <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, it just went downhill it's really quickly. It's a black hoodie, FYI. I can't do it's that. <laughs> on the white. I mean, you can turn that white. Probably not. I don't uh, think so. Dump some of that pink drink on there. I feel really bad that I just insulted you and I just met you, but it was you you did leave yourself wide open on that one. To be one. honest, I'm used to it. Yeah, well, you know, you'll you're gonna get a really thick skin. Oh, I already have. Yeah. I, I, I take this on a daily from him. Mm. You get so much praise too. It is it is ten to one praise to insults. You are his genius. Those insults hurt though. They hurt? They hurt. Yeah. The soft inside. They don't. <laughs> he's so full of it he can take it he can really take it we did get surveys of people being like chance we're not going to listen to this podcast anymore if you're not nicer to <laughs> are you serious <laughs> yeah. yes we were that was, we had a we oh had a handful my, of those oh my god really yeah oh, you have I to take it. those with a grain of salt though you know when it's one or two people out of like hundreds it was of like thousands 10. you gotta relax it was like what 10? do you do he broke it. it he my broke god. it he you just got me do my job. he How just got you? he got angry at you and then did you see that Toxic masculinity. To Toxic masculinity right there. He got upset and he broke something. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I was like saying, this is about to fall off and then it did. Well, no shit it did. <laughs> I guess we didn't get it screwed all the way back you on should... when we moved stuff back over here. Or you just have been messing with it for the past 10 episodes. Uh-oh. Shots fired. Okay, don't Thank touch you, it. Sir. Don't, right. touch it. don't touch it. Don't touch it. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. Back to your normal schedule programming. <laughs> See, and this is what's great. It's like we bring people in here. They have all these wonderful things you could tell us, but we just pick on him for 25 minutes. I don't know. It it, it was kind of fun. I kind of liked it. It was like a good, good warm-up. Yeah, it feels it feels. there's not a lot of people in Heiko to pick on. They'll just shoot you. I, yeah, I don't like picking on people. <laughs> People in it Heiko. It seemed like you really enjoyed it. Just okay, a well, ago. let's tell you, yeah, I did. I did enjoy that. Well, you're the you're the gateway. Mostly, for uh, mostly no. because like you remind Knowing me of my later. dad. <laughs> like, right. kind and of. Now the, I'm being picked on. The, the sense of humor. No, like that's like most people don't get like our Brandon sense of humor. My sister and I are like this too. Like we, like are kind of mean play with each other. Yeah. And my mom will always be like, "Oh my gosh, you people are horrible." And it's like this is how we show our love. We're aggressive regressive lovers yeah. like, <laughs> that's actually exactly how i describe it like aggressive it, yeah yeah I'm i not gonna, verbally abuse you it's because i like you it's because if I, like I don't you. speak to you or acknowledge you exist then i don't, then I don't like, like you, you. Yeah. yeah yeah i'm not calling you dad i'm not calling you dad <laughs> i'm your daddy ty i'm I've, daddy i've known him for 30 minutes already called him dad and insulted you let's do this maybe i should have a drink <laughs> Maybe you all should. Right, what do you want? I'll get going. Yeah, no. This is all, this is working out much better for me than it is for you, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're the gateway drug to all of this. I know. I know. You are the drug of this Okay, so podcast. I want to know, like, is this what you're doing full time? No. Okay, so what are you, what do you, if you don't mind me asking, um, what do you do full time? Well, I, I own a company called Complete Trailers. Okay. So we design custom application trailers okay so like if the military needs a command center for their troops in afghanistan they want mm -hmm. something that has a bunch of computers in it and like all the electrical components that they could talk to the united states from that mm -hmm. we do stuff like that or okay. if some dude has a ferrari and he wants a hundred thousand dollar race car trailer we do that too okay sweet yeah also do like living quarters horse trailers a little bit but i don't enjoy that marketplace very much wow why not um, well, I'm way, I'm really young and I don't have deep enough pockets to compete with like an NRS. Mm -hmm. So not that young. Uh, I mean, compared to someone who's 14, I'm not, but compared oh, to wow. most wow. people in the world, yes, I am. Oh, how old are you? I'm in my twenties, Ty. Just like you. <laughs> Just the upper. <laughs> how old do you turn this year? The upper twenties. I'm in the upper twenties. Is it the, the last twenty? <laughs> He's in the last twenty. You're in the, the last, last 20, twenty, aren't you? It's I okay. Am. I just turned the last twenty it. this month and I hate it. <laughs> I can't handle it. I'm gonna be the last twenty for like twenty more. I don't actually that's not true. I don't hate it. I started to freak out a little bit about it and then like it's awesome being alive. The only alternative is to not be around causing chaos. So I'm going to just dig it and roll with it. Yeah. Have fun with it. I've told some bad lies in my life. So saying I'm 29 for like three more years is probably not going to be one of them. Could you, I can't get away with saying I'm 29 for the next three years. Why not? Because of all the coffee? No, like I don't look, I don't 
Somebody thought I was like 32 the other day, which was a little insulting. I was going to say that. It sounds insulting. Yeah, it was a little insulting. I was yeah, like, like excuse that, you, Karen. I'm going to go invest in an eye cream now. <laughs> that would Thanks upset a lot. me. It did upset me. It was yeah, like. I couldn't take that from someone. Really? Mm-mm, I would slap them. You look 35. Yeah, probably. After 2020. I thought you I were talking to me and my heart no, just you, sank no. a little bit. I was like, I do? I should Man. Say, Chance, you look 35. Not you. You look great. Yeah. You're 29? Really? Huh. I, look, I look older than that. I can't actually tell. It's the glasses. Is it the glasses? It's the glasses. Let's see. Let's see the face without the glasses. Yeah, I look younger without the glasses. Oh yeah. Now you look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glasses go back on. The oh. glasses. The glasses give him a subtle air of refinement. That yeah. 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 I wear Definitely. them sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Depends on how tired I am. Is it distance or? No, it's everything. Uh, eye moves too much. I don't uh-huh. know what it's called. Yeah. Uh, st- stigmatism. I don't actually think tequila. It's the, I know how this no, too much. vodka. <laughs> But no, my tolerance for vodka is high enough that it takes more than that to do that. Mine is not. And my sister has been visiting me for, I don't know. Now it's basically, she's just living with me. The visit has turned into her being here because my family's had COVID. And um, like I drink when I'm around her and it's terrible because Mm. I don't drink during the week most of the time, like when I'm by myself and then she gets Your sister's a powerful drinker. She is like, we are, we are descended from very, very intense Scottish alcoholics. And so like (laughs) her tolerance is amazing. And she Mm -hmm. has subtly, you know, built it up over time. And I've just like kind of hung on her coattails and tried. And like, there are some mornings I've woken up and I was just like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what happened. (laughs) What did you do to me? Yep. I've got, I've got that sister. Do you? Yeah. My sister Ivy is. How many sisters do you have? Two. Two. Are you uh, the youngest or the no, oldest? I'm the oldest. You're but the we're oldest? all within like three years of each oh, other. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, wow. It's just like boom, boom, boom. Nice. I just. They did. Nice. They're not together anymore. Oh. Probably because of that. Probably, I was about to say. There's other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible joke. <laughs> it is. But yeah, I mean, my sister Ivy, <clears throat> she's hard to be around because she is very good at drinking and always has been. Since she was an age where she shouldn't have been drinking. Really? I drank, like, I started drinking way too young and had too much fun. And then I quit. And, like, I wasn't drinking when I turned 21. Yeah. And didn't do the whole big crazy deal. And then, like, then I drank a lot. And then I stopped. And, like, not that I have a problem with it, but I just feel better when I don't. And then Mm -hmm. I'll go and have a lot of fun like this last week i tried to keep up drinking with two navy seals and a russian that doesn't sound like a smart idea dude i gave i had i will tell you what i put up a really good fight like i gave it the all-american try and one, which one which one tucked you in because that sounds like a scary company to be blacked out in front no of. no those that's the best the navy company. seals protected you from the russian Right. I am. Was I was Cold convinced that she was a KGB agent, sleeper agent. <laughs> and I told her that. And I told her husband that and she was like the nicest woman in the world. It's like, oh, it's OK. You're going to be a spy. It's all right. We'll drink vodka together and we'll have very good, very good interpersonal relationship. But they'll build up international relations. You checked your back and made sure you didn't have any stitches around the kidney area. Yeah, I did. Actually, I did wake up with a dog bite. Because we were what? dirty dancing and um, singing karaoke, which I've never done. The Navy SEALs really dig karaoke. Um, That's turned, interesting. Yeah, it's a, it was it was an interesting experience. It was awesome. Just random people or you happen no, to know them for quite some time? No, so I work with a veterans organization called Operation Pay It Forward, OPIF. Um, and they basically do an ambassador program where they go um, all around the world on hunts. And mm. one veteran introduces another veteran and, and brings them kind of to the, into the fold. Um, and I did- Kind of like the Wounded Warrior Project in a way. Exactly, but- better (laughs) it's it's really amazing they're they're an incredible group of people and they're very um they're very real about the fact that they don't make money off of it that they're there to help guys once they're home from combat Mm -hmm. and um charlie put on a long um a long range shooting clinic in utah where I lived and they invited me to come shoot and I was the only civilian that got to shoot with these guys it was so cool um like just the neatest humans in the entire world. And my dad was a sniper and he never really, he, he's an amazing dude, but like shooting with him always made me really nervous. And I like- Cause he I, just makes everybody look terrible at it. Yeah, the dude, like he's he's not human. Like, and so, you know, you're a little girl and you're like out there and you're little, my, my little pony outfit. Like you really want to make your dad proud. And you're like, okay, I gotta like be a really good shot. But then hmm. like- yeah, I guess I just never learned like the basics from him on 
on long range shooting. And so it was really cool to like go out with Charlie and he's super calm. And like he taught Marcus Luttrell and Chris Kyle and like, he's very, um, he's just very easy to be around and his voice gets very low and comforting. <laughs> he goes, you know, front sight trigger, front sight trigger <laughs> and just kind of walks you through it. But, yeah. um, I went and did his pistol courses last week. Um, which is kind of a part of the whole stalker thing. Really? Yeah. Oh, can we know more about the stalker thing? Sure. Yeah. There's not really anything off limits. Like, I don't know what you want to talk about. Literally, but will... I'm, you're... I'm a squirrel. So, so Ty, wait, wait, I'm the dog who looks at the squirrel. I would that's just like to say that that's the first time I've ever told anyone that in any kind of about recording the situation. No, like oh. that nothing's off limits. Like, oh, that's like, that's actually, this is fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I mean, <laughs> hey, Ty, how many people do you think have walked into the studio and been like, you know, a little reserved? And the next thing you know, they're spilling their guts on their deepest, darkest secrets. At least half the guests. Yeah. I'm sure. I don't know why that is. Because people innately want to share what makes them them. Yeah. And that's what the show's all about. Then also add on some booze, that too. She's well, not just, drinking booze. It's well, coffee. So, well, well, just, just naturally. She's Mormon. Like, they're not allowed to have booze, but they're also not allowed <laughs> to have shock coffee. Is a Mormon. I would so. <laughs> There is an outfit that some of those girls wear that I like that looks great on them, but like I just don't have the body type to be a hot Mormon wife. That I bonnet? Don't. Yes. I don't know if that. I don't think I could consider that hot in any circle. At least well, not no, for my but taste. Then, okay, there's there's the bonnet thing, but then there's like the young, super in shape, really hot Mormon wives that like are like a, a thing on Instagram too. They're like they're like a clique. And they wear kind of a certain outfit. It's, I have it's literally thing. never heard of this. I will click. send you pictures. Do it's, it. I will. It's a thing. Yeah, I don't believe it. It's, it's a just, thing. Hot Mormon. Those two things. Dude, when I lived there, never. like there was a couple girls that I met that, you know, like, so for girls, there's this thing you instantly, like you have a girl crush. You, you just like, you meet a girl and you're like, oh my God, I want to be you. You're so gorgeous. Like I can't handle it. Like there's a couple of those women that I met and then I was like, oh, you're like, you're a part of the cool Mormon chick club. Like, mm. I didn't realize this was a thing. Like, if I join, do I instantly get hotter? Like, how does this work? <laughs> like, can I pay to join? How do I get into this thing? <laughs> well, first you have to give up the three pots of coffee. Yeah, not gonna happen. Yeah, and then you have to subscribe. Well, I mean, then I have to, to wear all itchy of their underwear. Beliefs. Ugh. Yeah, the the they wear like the long underwear. Do they have right? the option to wear no underwear? I don't know. Is it I, like no underwear or I could long never be underwear? a part of a religion that tells me what kind of panties to wear. I just couldn't. Most religions tell you what kind of panties to wear if you get Do they? into really? them deep Do enough. They? Yeah, yeah. There's something in the Christian Bible about like thou shalt not wear g strings. I don't know. I made that up. Thou shalt not wear nothing with bows on it. <laughs> 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 Thou shall not wear Thou any panties wear. that are edible. No Fredericks of Hollywood. Only Victoria's Secret. Only La Perla. <laughs> Only high quality. Did you break it again? It's just... It's just speaking of shit quality, Ty. <laughs> that's all you. That's uh, not me. Oh, my God. Told Ty when we started this, hey, make sure we get the very best things. Mm -hmm. These are... These suck. Those are you good. Don't like you them. just suck no. using them. You know what would be really cool? Because you have, like, the gauge is to, like, have um, somebody weld you, like, some like gun barrel deals mic thingies that sounds cool build some gun barrel things you could do like one with a like a black powder lock or something on it one with a shotgun deal these were they would probably move worse than these yeah i was gonna say this probably might be <laughs> probably very impractical <laughs> i'm down you know somebody well, i'll do it totally i know somebody did yeah. somebody make those bell boots for me those, those are, are cool. sweet yeah. they're super sweet one of our sponsors at one time I made those and they sent them as a gift. Those I don't know what cool. bell boots are. Well, if you opened your fucking eyes, dude, they're right in front of you. <laughs> I, I, know, I I could see them. I don't know. How about, they, how about I don't, that's a bell boot? That's a bell boot. Do those go on hooves? They do go they on go, hooves. They go, they go on their ears. They go on their ears. Up on top, like a little cap. <laughs> Not on the hoof, but around the hoof. I see. To protect hoof. the hoof. hoof. I get it. The hoof. 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 That's one of those with words it, that it. all of a sudden just got really hoof. weird. It did. <laughs> hoof. Because that's actually probably how you pronounce it, but it's hoof when you call hoof. it hoof. But we just use an hoof. F. We use hoof. the F sound instead of the V sound. Wow, hoof. we have covered an intense array of <laughs> topics. topics here, dude. Like bell boots, panties, in no particular order. Mormons. Yeah, <laughs> bullying each other. <laughs> yeah. Always just a little fun. <laughs> She's right. Just a it's little. Just how bit. You it's just, not a lot. It's just how you show love. <laughs> I'm not a huge religious person. You're either. not. Not huge, hugely. At least not organized religion. 
We've had two passers in here. And I, you know what? Like, Jordan is, like, the best. To me, oh, yes. he's the perfect pastor. Super realistic. What don't you like? It's interesting that you said, like, organized religion. Do you just, like, not subscribe to? I don't like mega churches, if I'm being honest. You don't like people, like, no, telling you how no, to live your I, life. I don't like people who sleazy. profiteer off of religion. Yeah. That bothers me. Yeah, that makes because sense. Because people, like, they subscribe to that so hard. And I just feel like they're being taken advantage of. Like, I just think that... The it's like G- an MLM of religion. Yeah, but if you read about Jesus, it's like these religious constructs are not what Jesus was. And it pisses me off. And so I don't like it. Yeah. And I'm just going to be authentic and be like, I don't like that shit. I, yeah, it's interesting. I struggle. Like, my dad is a theologian and he's a pastor's kid. And, like, I grew up in a super, super controlling, like, honestly, if I'm being real, like very religious house and getting a little bit older and kind of stepping away from it. I'm like, love Jesus, but save me from your people. Cause that gets a little crazy. It does. Yeah. And it's just, they get a little carried away with themselves. And I think they get drunk on power a lot of the time too. Yeah. Why does the Catholic, why is the value of the Catholic church I, so high? It's isn't that weird. It's just how because they, how do they cover up all of that kitty rape? Like just been covering that up for centuries. Well, but you still have a mass of people who are totally willing to buy what they're saying. No idea. Doesn't make sense. It's like, it's like, there's no common sense there. Well, there's, there's no common sense there. And there's a, there's like, how do you value you and your family that you would allow them to be a part of something like that? Like, not very much, I, no, because I guess, because you're willing dogma. to endanger your family. People are so dogmatic. They just, they get in these, like, grooves. They're like ants, right? Yeah. Like, if you draw a line around the ants, you've seen that thing, and they won't go out. That's how people are. People are just like that. Yeah, I At think At least that, in mass. I think people, yeah, it's probably a better analogy than the sheep thing. Because I feel like sheep that's a little insulting. Dumb. Yeah, sheep are yeah. sheep are too dumb having been around sheep. Like I think the ant thing's probably better. But is it is a little scary how you look at what people will jump on the bandwagon with now and they'll just follow follow each other off the cliff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it doesn't even matter what side of that fence you're on. It happens on both and it's silly. Yeah. It's silly. The in terms of religion, Scientology is probably the worst with that. You think Scientology so? is that's, hilarious. That's weird. That is, if I'm being honest, like I don't know much about Scientology. I know, oh, I know of a course, lot about it. Really? A lot. Are you from like a Scientology no. family or? No. I mean, no. I'm just my wondering, parents, were you not hugged enough as a kid? My parents are <laughs> horse <laughs> trainers. Hug? My parents are horse trainers. Okay. Which means they could never afford to be Scientologists. I was going to say, they, they so would never. So it costs never. a lot of money to be in Scientology. To be saying? at the upper echelons, it costs a sh- ton of money. Really? It's, to absolutely. do what? Like buy it, love? All right. If you want. Like, what are you? Buy levels. Oh. Yeah. If you want to. Honestly, the show I would recommend for anyone that actually wants to learn how fucked up Scientology is. Uh, Leah Remini and the Aftermath of Scientology is probably a great show to figure this out. It's fucked up. I don't think much mm. of our audience gives a crap about I'm just saying. If they want something interesting, <laughs> it's, it's a good show. But it's people influenced to spend a shit ton of money. Really? Keep spending money and get. <laughs> pressured into spending money watch your mouth ty we have children who listen to this show all right whatever and then (laughs) and then if they say anything bad about scientology they have a whole set of rules that allows them to essentially attack people without physically attacking them but pressuring them into not speaking out about the church about punishing their families that are still within the church to not speak with them well and here's the fun thing it's like from top to bottom they all know it's fake but they still do it. It's hilarious. That's weird. The only religion that I think is almost, it's, oh, do I go after Mormons right now? I know a lot about LDS. Like the whole Mormon thing is just silly to me because I I read the book about uh, Joseph Smith Mm -hmm. and it was really interesting. Do you feel like it's like all a trick on all a trap? I mean, I feel like Joseph Smith was a baller way above his time and conned everybody so he could steal their wives. And I'm like, I can... (laughs) I can get behind really? everything you did, dude. You're way before your time, oh. but he was the ultimate con man. Yeah, that's probably actually okay. I can see how you would think that. Yeah, I don't. But if you just look at everything he did, he was like, dude, this guy was way above his time as far as just like he was like selling gold watches. I just, I yeah, I I don't know enough about either one of them to probably have too much of a viewpoint on them. Man, honestly, man. like I really don't. But they scare this is a me. A lot when for you, a show about Western crap. Yes, I, I didn't even. Are we are we going? I didn't even know that we were going. I was you, just. You thought <laughs> we've been going for a long time. We've been I, recording for thirty minutes. Now. Sweet. 
I like honestly the the religion thing though. If you're making money off of me, like in any way big, any big way, that worries me. Wait, like, so you've never bought a Joel Osteen prayer cloth? What about the Joel Osteen inspirational cube? I have bought a um, a devotional. I did an entire devotional this last year by Joyce Myers, actually, that I really enjoyed. That was really, like, that had a lot of really good things in it. And it was very comforting. And I really struggled with it as well. Really? Because, yeah, because, What was like, hard about it? Well, I think a lot of the time with, like, a lot of the time with certain things related to belief you're supposed to like have this idea that the world is this great happy go lucky place and if you just try hard enough to be happy that everything will be okay like that was kind of what I got from the devotional I really liked it at first and then halfway through I was kind of like so she's basically just telling me that like life can be kind of hard sometimes but if you smile enough it'll be better like and then that that lies the, just, the whole issue is there's no realism in feels most of fake these things. yeah that felt very fake because yeah. I mean, I'm sure George Myers has helped a lot of people. I mean, she's a big time <clears throat> figure, like as far as religious yeah. celebrity goes, she's one of them. But that's interesting, though. Like a religious celebrity is a thing. That's oh, yeah. That's amazing. Televangelism is alive and well in Texas. Is it really? Very. Oh, absolutely. Joe Olstein's Houston. Yeah, oh, dude really? has like six mansions and like twelve jets. Really? It's ridiculous. I. It's ridiculous. I have it. That's why I have a huge problem with it. I was like, dude, you're a profiteer. Yeah, that's, that's all you are. I don't know. I, I, I think I can get good things from anywhere and anyone, but there's a limit to yeah. the positivity that you can get yeah. to fix things. Because like, people don't even understand where most of that comes from. Most of it is just like chemicals in your brain, and they just change like the weather. They truly do. Like you, yeah. Hormones and chemicals in your brain, a lot of you're like your body's designed to like Well, and you set yourself your you set yourself up for failure or success too, I think. Like yeah. with a lot of that, I don't think people understand that like if if you are a healthy person, if you're a happy person, like it takes a lot of work. And I don't think most people are willing to work to be happy. You know happy. when you eat really shitty food? Yes. You like kind of go through like a mild depression for a little bit. Yes. And you feel it, like, sluggish your system. and icky and like, yeah. 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 But I think you can do that with like all facets of your life too. Oh, like absolutely. friends and family and. Even the weather does it to you a little bit. Do you get like seasonal depression? No, I don't really subscribe to depression that much. Mm -hmm. But why do, you, why do you think Seattle has grunge music? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I like grunge music. Oh no, the grunge music is like kind of related but, like, to kind their of weather. born out of sadness. Related to their dude, I can get weather. behind sad music. I just can't get behind people who just like constantly grumble and complain. I hate that. I've I, had so many people be like, you, "You, the the positivity is fake. Like you're not that happy." And it's like, no, I'm not always happy, but I am always joyful. It's the difference between joy and happiness. Yeah. The That's biblical. That's biblical, actually. It's the nitpickers in life. The uh, nitpickers. That are worst. Yeah. It's easy, dude. Life's so easy. Like, life is so easy. I'm duding him, not you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> is life easy? <laughs> like, is comparatively, if you grew up in the Dust Bowl, you yes. think that life is hard for anybody right now? No. No. No, no, no. This is the best time to be alive in history. Abs absolutely. Would completely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that if you were born in the Dust Bowl that you would care what's going on between Trump and Biden? I can be like, wait, I could go get a full <laughs> meal from a yeah. window? Yeah. For six ninety nine? Huh? Well, and also like not worrying about where your next meal is gonna come from. That's kind of a big one for me. Like yeah. pe people always like like growing up, obviously like we always had enough, but like there were points in when I was a kid, like when we were in Ukraine, then I remember being like really hungry and like asking my mom for food and her being like, you know, we'll later, later, we'll, we'll get you food later. And then like later never coming and being like, man, I'm really like kind of hungry. And then like you grow up a little bit and you go, wow, there's some people that that later really never comes. And yeah. there's no opportunity to change that. Especially in places like Ukraine. Yeah. At least you were at a U.S. embassy probably, right? Nope. No, we were, um, we were actually staying with, um, friends that were building a uh, orphanage they were we smuggled bibles into ukraine from poland wow that, but i actually just learned that this last year it was like what were we doing in ukraine by the way dad <laughs> like what were we doing so there? he wasn't there on a military operation no no daddy was never in the military he was always a civilian he was a sniper um he was uh, he was a street cop and then he was a sniper in swat um and then he Actually, today is the anniversary of him being blown up um, in Iraq. 
um, in the green zone uh, 17 years ago. He was hit by a mortar. Um, Hang on. Is daddy with us? Yes, daddy's oh, with okay. us. Right, yes, right, yeah. he was wounded. Excuse me, wounded. I always say yeah, he blown was up hit. sounds blown up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's actually this is terrible. So he's just getting over COVID, and this dude, he's the coolest guy in the entire world. Like, so he was doing contractor work. Yeah, he was the director of internal security under Bremer when he was there. So he was. Okay. He was doing interesting things. Yeah, he's, very interesting. Yeah, things. he's 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 a cool dude, but he like he still has um like sand that is coming out of his head and little bits of metal that are still coming out of his head like 17 years later. Really? Yeah, it's super weird. That is super weird. Yeah, and like sometimes he'll he'll be standing there and like he'll kind of ah and a little piece of metal will like just exit. Nuh-uh. Yeah, it's weird. Like super a pimple? Weird. Like a pop Kind pimple? of, yeah. Like, like super a, weird. No, it's that super weird. weird. No, it's super creepy. It was actually kind of funny. So like I don't have tattoos. My sister doesn't have tattoos. Like it just isn't a thing with us. And my dad comes home one day when with I was tattoo? in California with a tattoo and he got this awesome tattoo, like a commemorative deal where he was hit. And I'm like, oh, my dad is so cool. Like he has tats and everything. 60 years old. And he like goes and gets his first tattoo. You're so <laughs> cool, dad. <laughs> yeah, my dad has all kinds of tattoos. Really? He's a horse trainer. Really? Doesn't really fit. Really? Yeah. It's like half sleeves. Oh, sweet. See, that was that was my thing. Like if I was gonna get a tattoo, I couldn't just do one. It would have to be you like a chest piece and like like down the legs and girls can get away with it it's super hot when girls have good tattoos good tattoos that's a thing though it's got to be good i don't know there's i like tattoos on other people just like i don't think i'm one of those people that would look good with tattoos and, and your, I, your whole personality changes when you have them you have to commit to i have the to whole be like really thing. mean mean mug people no no not as a woman no no i don't think so as a guy you, everything has to change really do you have maybe tattoos? not so much now yeah how many tattoos do you have Five. Are they really meaningful? Or is it like a no. bunny? Is it like something that, like, it, is, is it, it like miss. a pink bunny? <laughs> it's nothing like that. <laughs> Let's just say I thought they were meaningful at 16 and 17. Oh, yeah. They've been lasering them off. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. They're not bad tattoos per se. Eh, I don't know, really. Mm. Yeah, they're not bad tattoos per se. But they're they just, just don't mean what they did at the time. Well, okay, so th- and this is the thing. When I was in high school, like, I thought tattoo, like, I really wanted a bunch mm-hmm. of tattoos. But then, like, tattoos were, like, in, like, 2008, 2009, 2010, yeah. 2011, when I was in high school, like, that era. Yeah. Tattoos meant something different than they do now. Yeah. Like, it was, like, bikers and UFC fighters and hardcore some now, bitches had them. And now it's, like, every, baristas. Everybody has them. Woke people. Yes. And it's hipsters. just hipsters. It's a hipster thing. And it's, like. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like a dragon and a koi fish meant something <laughs> now. <laughs> a now? dragon and a koi fish? Really? Well, I'm just like, dude, if you saw a Japanese dude with a dragon and a koi fish, you're like, that dude probably has a samurai sword tucked in his pants. Probably. Now you see a dude at Starbucks serving your coffee and he's it's like, oh, that's a beautiful koi it's fish. A beautiful fish. Yeah. With a serpentine dragon wrapped around your arm. <laughs> Why is your hair purple? <laughs> To be honest, that tattoo sounds pretty bad. I was just about to say, man, that actually sounds really cool. Like, I, said the my tattoo. Point. Like, Why not? I said the tattoo. It's, it sounds cool. It sounds super cool. Yeah, but it doesn't mean what it used to Plus, be. I'm yeah. also not the person like you where you're so judgmental about tattoos. Now. Also, like. No, I'm judgmental about like the tattoos that I would have because if I see it on a barista, but why, I'm going to be fucking you're gonna be pissed. pissed. No, but, why, yeah. but why are you pissed about that? Because if I get a tattoo, it's to like commemorate something amazing maybe. yeah but elevate badassery to offset the glasses but maybe <laughs> maybe that means something to them yeah maybe it does but maybe but it also makes but me wh- feel or worse why you, why you, wait so you you would just be upset that they copied you so that no. then you wouldn't be unique so uniqueness no, I, is it. that's it i don't think tattoos are unique anymore you exactly. just hit it on the head exactly. they're not unique they're like not they unique. were because everybody right. has them. Because it used to be a thing that Hell's Angels could carry off really well, and and like normal people, good people, didn't have them. What I'm showed saying what a badass is, you were. it was a sign of badassery at yeah. one point, but now it isn't. And yeah. I think you can even agree with that. But also, isn't it better that it's kind of normalized? Because it used to, if you had a tattoo, some places of work would not even take you. Yeah, but I liked so- that. For just me personally, I was like, dude, if that dude's willing to commit to that, that dude's probably a badass. Like he knows he just fucked his life up, and he still did it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I don't like. I think that you, it's acceptable I think anymore. you can still have that, depending on what tattoo you get. Yeah, you black out your eyes, maybe, or split your tongue and get, do the bumps on your head. No, that's actually tattoo. creepy. I've seen some of those people at like a supermarket, and yeah. that was weird. 
That was uber it's weird. A, now it's mm. like tattoos are normal. It's the body modifications that are the big thing with like gauges. Do you think stuff that like it's you guys different? Said. Like altering your body? Do you think it's like yeah, people a have bad... been gauging their ears for it? No, but yeah. it's by like the extreme gauges and now. Putting you know what are the the bumps, the yeah. coffee beans or stuff in your skin? I mean, I don't know what they're the, putting in there, I don't but know what I kind of like it. it. It looks cool. I, I like people like that. See, it's now it's now we're coming back around, and I'm from such a subculture. <laughs> like rodeo is such a subculture. Like everybody kind of like is similar. And so I get, I'm like, even though Creed Fisher was totally wild, I was like, dude, I don't want to do this anymore because I'm getting sleepy, <laughs> but I like how freaking you, you are. Like balls to the wall. He is him. Yeah. He's got yeah. freaking these giant red and white, like, I don't know, like evil Knievel boots on. Oh, sweet. Headband. He's tatted up Harley shirt. And he's mm-hmm. just like, I'm me. And I'm like, dude, I freaking love that. Yeah unapologetic yeah. penis because you're not trying to blend in and make everybody else comfortable yeah well but it is safer i mean it is sa- my sister and i i always revert back to her but like we were talking the other day about it's so much safer to go with a crowd it is and it's it, hard not to we're crowd like humans are crowd creatures yeah and i think we're also kind of people pleasers at our core because we know that that's safer too if you make everybody happy and you stay small you know your friends are probably gonna probably going to have more friends because they're going to want to hang out with you and you know life's going to be a little bit easier and you're not going to have to struggle so much and yeah i hate that conflict's scary for a lot of people i like conflict actually i didn't used to i like it now yeah same i used to not like it cool let's fight no wait <laughs> <laughs> you're about to pull up the headphones <laughs> fight tie <laughs> oh that one i'm not gonna say what i was gonna say Sorry. i saw that look i almost said it i saw that look fight. i no i wouldn't Ladies don't start fights. We just finish them. We I could go just... we could go tournament style. Who gets to be the final boss? <laughs> it's my show. I get to be the final boss. It's yeah. my show. So you've created your own empire full surrounding yourself with yes people so that you can Just in this instance. Just in this instance. I just thought <laughs> this is a great opportunity to be like make a video game reference about fighting. I want to be the final boss. <laughs> There's layers to the gauge. Oh, there's I a love lot of it. Layers. There Every, feels everybody like there's gets... a lot of layers. I'm actually really, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm shocked. Oh, that's cool. Shocked and odd. Thank you. Not what I expected. Really? What did yep. you expect? I actually want to know that. You know, I think it's so funny. Like people, when they like want to do a podcast or do like interviews with people, know. it's like, so, you know, like, so tell me how old were you when you started singing and, and, and did you like that? And, um, and, uh, you know, soft voice, yeah, and, all that. And kind of go around, you know, skirt so, around so. all the, all the heavy stuff. You just jumped right into the Vatican and Mormon church and you're drinking vodka. <laughs> I mean, like, it's awesome. Yeah. It's great. Can I be honest? I didn't even know you sang. That is so awesome. Oh my God. I'm, did I tell him I loved him twice when he, like before when he I made me coffee? I'll tell you a third time. I love you. That I makes me so like, happy. I don't look through people's Instagrams really. Really? No. Like I how just, do you interact on social media? I don't, I don't even run them. You don't even look at them. Not really. I mean, we have a marketing man. You were talking to Riley. You thought you were talking to, well, you talked to me for a little bit on the Instagram, but really you were talking to our marketing manager. For on the Instagram. I the like that. That's kind Instagram. of how my dad taught is I was on the Twitter. I was on the Twitter. The I was Twitter. on the Instagram. I was on the gram. The yeah. Facebook. The Facebook. Yeah. I'm just not huge into social media. So like. It's healthier. Sometimes. That's I'll probably res- why his skin is so clear. Yeah. And he's such yeah. a happy person. Is I wouldn't say he's not- happy, but. I think he's secretly happy. I don't know about all that. What do you, I mean, you get to see me at my absolute freak out on people times. I would not say that he get like really, really, are you like, he's too busy and stressed with his other work and this to be on social media. Are you a super like emotional human? No, no, no. You're like, are you a stoic? Probably like a super stoic. Oh, sweet. So it's like, this is like a Marcus Aurelius podcast. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about that, but yeah, close. He has a bit of an ego. I don't have an ego. You do. No, I don't. I have an ego. I totally own it. Ego is a good pusher. You have an ego, Ty. Ego makes me work harder. I'm a little I more like humble it. in my ego, though. Humble, more <laughs> yeah, humble I'm than I am. <laughs> I would say a little bit. <laughs> what's the scale, though? Like, what is ego good or bad, though? What's I think the scale a good of thing. ego that we're comparing all of ourselves to here? Mm. Like, who do you think is an out of control ego maniac? If you could, like, doesn't even have to be someone that it like, could be a famous person. I'm trying to think. Don't say Trump. I was just I, about I, I, to I'm say, not trying, I was trying to think someone that's not named don't Trump. Don't say Trump. Um, no. Come back to me on this. Okay. One. Let me Google Trump. this. Trump. 
If Trump, Trump is, no, I, I can think of a different Trump ego is an ego main. No, I know, but it's just for the sake of time and I don't and as many fucks as I'm not going to give in five minutes when we move on to something else. <laughs> Trump is the well, just for this, he's the benchmark. He's the ultimate on that. Okay, where do you put yourself on a scale of um, um, Mother Teresa to Trump? Is Mother Teresa like? I don't know. Oh, Gandhi. Gandhi, Gandhi to there Trump. You go. Gandhi. Gandhi. Gandhi, Gandhi there you go. to Trump. Where there you do you go. put yourself? I'll say Pretend that's lower one middle. To ten. Lower middle. Lower middle. Okay. And then where do you put me? Higher middle. <laughs> <laughs> you look nervous. I found one. That's Kanye. Kanye. Oh, Ooh. I freaking love Kanye. Ka- Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. You were like one of the only. Yes. That dude is hilarious. I love Kanye. I don't care what anybody says. I love Kanye, and He's I like brave. Kim Kardashian, too. He's brave. I don't care how she got famous. I like her. Okay. I, don't you think everybody is just jealous that she was able to become famous for something like that and become still be invited to the Become famous for something that literally Gala everybody- Does, but doesn't talk about? Exactly. Yeah. And she's smart, and she's a good businesswoman. They hate that she's unapologetically altered herself as well. That's a huge thing with people is that, like, we love to think that our heroes are naturally good at everything and naturally perfect and appear. How dare these bitches with their rubber butts? How dare they work at it? How dare they pay somebody to look like that? (laughs) But she she also had a little bit of fame already from her father. Yeah, Yeah, but, dude, it was next level. Like, oh, yeah, the yeah, most yeah. famous she, people yeah, she on this stepped planet. Out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I Isn't think it's that cool. incredible, though? Like, I understand that there's moral issues with them, but, like, just the whole premise of, like, dude, she made a sex tape and now she's famous? Like, I don't know. It worked. I used to sex tape with Andre. think that I had huh? pro- with Andre. Who's Andre? Who's Andre? The, the guy that... She- Ray J. Bro. Ray J. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ray J. Andre. <laughs> There's I two. don't know. I haven't seen the tape. I'll just say that. But. Again, that was also... <laughs> that was before my time, anyway, in terms of pop culture. I don't culture. even remember how long ago how that was. How young is he? 22. He's 22. He's 22. Oh my God. What were you doing at 22? I mean, similar shit to I am now, just not really? podcast. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Not much. Mm. Me at 22 is not any different than right now. Really? I'm just way smarter. Ooh. Where do you think you are on the ego scale? I don't know. I, don't know. I was going to say like lower middle, but I guess <laughs> other people's upper. opinions of that is different. Do you think it's like ego or do you think it's confidence? Though I think people confuse ego with confidence a lot of the time. And they think that you're a like egomaniac if you like yourself and you're confident uh, in what you do. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I wasn't super confident as a little kid, so I didn't really? develop it. Yeah. When did that change? I don't really know. I'm asking you questions though. People people I'm have heard <laughs> it's it's interesting. People have heard everything from like cause you're like the seventieth person to try to cross analysis me. So, oh, no, so the I audience just, is. I enjoy on, it. You do. You, you like it, but the audience is like, we well, already know what it would. Say. Oh no! See, I don't want to hear about your high school days. I don't want to talk about your sister. I'm saying I just yeah. like people. Like that's so do I. like as a writer, uh, people fascinate me. But I mean, I don't people know. watching is like part of my job. It's it's cool to like. You know. Yeah, I mean, we we me and my sisters all had a rough childhood, so mm-hmm. yeah, it affected me. It actually affected all of us in a way. I mean, when your parents are horse trainers, it just depending on what type of horse trainer they are, mm-hmm. it could be really tough on the family mm-hmm. financially and just all that. And we live in a place that was really affluent, mm-hmm. like as far as the people around us, mm-hmm. but we were freaking dirt poor. Dirt poor, yeah. And so the judgment from like kids at a certain point, and that went away mm-hmm. as we got older. Cause like I chose to live with my dad. Ooh, that was, yeah, it was, it was a tough decision. Did they make you choose or did you just kind of naturally one doesn't know these things, but uh, I'm sure there's lots of people out there who have opinions because it was mm-hmm. out in the open for a lot mm-hmm. of people to see in the in that industry. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I chose to live with my dad. Hindsight, probably not the best idea. My mom had a lot more money. Mm-hmm. It was a lot better environment. And yeah, so I had all these issues and I worked through them as I got older and I moved with my mom. But yeah, so I don't think it's ego. I think it's just like, dude, no one is going to freaking tell me anything. I'll slap you. I will. <laughs> He's been close to doing that to me. Really? Yeah. Has it, have you slapped anybody in here before? No. 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 Every, I mean, every time we do these, they're awesome. I would never do that. I mean, I'm just wondering, like, you were ready for me and Ty to throw down here a second ago. I just I like, was... I just like, I actually, I love fighting. <laughs> He's the one that do encourages you? I might like fighting really? more than rodeo. Really? Yeah. Have you heard how many times times he mentions Joe Rogan? Oh, I freaking love, dude, I've been listening to Joe oh, Rogan since I was in high school. That dude's amazing. I copied him. That's cool. I like that you, yeah, that's awesome. What? I like how much he talks about aliens. 
Honestly, that's like, that's my big deal. My sister just figured out that I love aliens in space. You do? Yeah. I'm like weirdly excited about it. So like, like this whole thing invasion. where they're like, oh, the aliens are coming. You're like, please. This is so awesome. Like you're going to throw this into the middle of a civil war. Heck yes. Like, have, you, have you seen the movie Mars Attack? No, I don't. Because we don't want that. So I've seen, there was, okay, so this is totally random. So my sister had a camp job in the middle of northeastern Nevada when I was a kid. And camp I went and, like, job? Yeah. Like she was she worked like, at a summer like pack mules? No. Or she like was she a, worked at a summer camp like Jason Vortes? No, like she was a cowboy and she had a little group of cows that she was taking care of on a summer camp. So she was out of oh, a, she's you, like super cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I was like 14, 13, 14. And was like, okay, my 19 year old sister's like moving out on her own and like going and doing like her dream job. I get to go with her, obviously go drive her crazy. I don't know why all that matters, but like we watched this movie called Man. War of the Worlds in her camp. Like she had this little TV set up on the, that ran off of the generator. Like in a bunkhouse? No, she was in a trailer. It was a dry trailer and like her dry camp. And so like you had to haul water in and stuff. And it was, it was this great little camp. But like we watched this movie this one night and it was, I still have nightmares about it. I'm still freaked out by it. Like I cannot watch, like I love space and aliens, but I can't watch the movies about it. <sighs> Speaking of Scientology, I do me. not love Tom Cruise and he was in that movie. Uh, that guy's different. I have like a love hate He's relationship different. with Tom Cruise. In Top Gun, all about it. Different Tom Cruise. So different pre Scientology. Was Tom that pre Scientology? Did like, he like totally freak out afterwards? Let me find out. I don't think he ever went off the deep end. I just is he a vampire? He was in a movie with Brad Pitt. Really? Yeah, he looks he was a kind vampire. Of like he doesn't age. Yeah, he's old too. Yeah, so Tom Cruise joined Scientology around 1990. Yeah. You are his Jamie. I what, love six, it. Six years post post Top Gun. Yeah, yeah. It's so that was when the change happened. The problem is, with, again, I say I have a love-hate relationship with him because I love the actor, mm -hmm. Tom Cruise, because he's f amazing in his movies. Mm -hmm. But the person's a piece of shit at times, though. I don't know anything like about him other than all I know about the Scientology him thing and that I love Top Gun. Is I like Jerry Maguire. I like <gasps> Top Gun. Oh, yeah, that Jerry Maguire was a good one. Show me the no. money! <laughs> I like Risky Business. I've never seen it. I love the Mission Impossible movies. Which 12 versions of that? Seven. There are so many. Seven. <laughs> there are seven. There, there are real, I actually enjoy them. There are seven. There are so there's many more, of them. There's more Mission Impossibles than Star Wars, dude. <laughs> well, not anymore. Like, oh, whatever. Close. Star Wars, and now Star Wars has like TV shows too. Yes. The spin off TV shows. Do uh, we? I watch them. Oh. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, this should have been a known. This should have been a known fact. I'm not going to, I'm not going to assume. We should probably talk about some of like the stuff that you've done. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Like insulting time, the the bunny thing, and then it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of want to know about a little bit of it. I really enjoy like what we're doing to tie here, but I was actually interested in like that whole like like the abusive relationship thing to then going out and just like disappearing in the wilderness, doing a walkabout and all of that. Walkabout. Yeah. Walkabout. Yeah. Walkabout. Yeah. walkabout. yeah. I just want to know about all that. I don't know um, if it's a tender subject, but I'd like to hear it. No, I'm like actually shockingly super open this is actually like kind of fun because again i always preface everything by saying so my sister liz and i were talking about but we were talking the other day and I was like you know i used to like as a kid i started singing when i was 13 I started out in opera and like there was always kind of this expectation <clears throat> because i worked full-time in music like when i was younger that like you had to be a certain way and Although my family is amazing and lovely. That's the hint that he wants it filled up. He wants to be darlinged. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Would you give me just, just some water, a little bit of that sugar-free Red Bull, and a very small splash of vodka? Not too much, please. Shaking, not stirred. That sounds like a lot. That's a martini, sis. You should. All you right, should. so say that one more time. You want water? Water. Red Bull. A little bit of that vodka and a little bit of that Red Bull. Not too much Red Bull because I don't vodka? get jittery. Which vodka? Because we're out of Tito's. Uh, I think it's sitting there. It's All got right. like the mount. I like it. that there's choices. It looks like Grey Goose, but it's not. <laughs> I feel like you should have a martini though, just because the glasses are so pretty. Yeah, I like James Bond too. I do too. Really I, do. I don't think martinis go with cowboy boots. Oh, martinis go with everything. Maybe. Maybe oh. for a woman. Absolutely. Yeah, there's certain standards that have to be upheld on the man side of things. Oh, really? Yeah, which I don't like because I really enjoy other things that aren't just cowboy like what? A lot of things. Like there, there's so many different layers to 
me that is not cowboy. It's it's and it amazing. Bugs people. But I was just about to say, but it is so amazing. Like I I constantly at this point in life have people that are like, you know, you've changed so much from what you used to be when you were 15, 16. It's like, yeah, there is a whole Thank big so world much, out there. That was very fast, amazing drink mixing Yeah, how skills. did you do that? that did was you impressive. put the bottles like this and do one of these? That was fast. That was like, I'm like an fast, under, fast. That was like Mr. Incredible fast. Pew, pew. Wait, I think you're in the wrong <laughs> superhero. Oh. Mr. Incredible is a strong one. Oh, oh my god! Oh, it was did the just... kid. Oh, he corrected me on the on the. Wow. You just correct. That was rude. Wow. Just, sorry. I don't want. Someone to... has an ego. I I no actually I'm just really impressed that he knows the Incredible movies. Well. Why? He's 14. What do you expect? <laughs> wow. Oh I grew, I He's grew gonna up need trauma so. therapy when he gets out of here. I have uh, the name of a really good therapist. If you please, want, please write that down. In Heiko, Texas, I'm sure they're. No, not in Heiko. Thank goodness. Hey, if I get a good I deal, I'll drive to Heiko. I couldn't live in the same town as my therapist. I talked really? to them way too much. No, I'd get awkward. You subscribe to therapy pretty hardcore. Uh, for me, yes, just because, like, my mental health has become my main priority in life. My mental and physical health, like, just I yeah. just realized a few. As soon years as I started ago, following on Instagram, like, you're getting it in the gym. You're getting it in the gym. Yeah, well, I quite frankly, am I allowed to cuss on here? Yeah. Uh, I became a fat piece of shit as a as a human, honestly. Like, and I was a really miserable. I was going to say, I think I've said the f word, the s word, and every other word at least three times on just this show. Oh, okay. And I'm trying to limit the f words to one per one per. So do I just can't. So choose, so choose like the moment really wisely is what you're saying. <laughs> Usually, I save it for the very end. I get around certain impactful. people, and it like comes out. Like the other night when we were drinking with Charlie, like. I'm like, I'm around Navy SEALs. They're not going to be offended. And at one point, one of them looked at me and was like, damn, girl. And was like, oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> like, that <laughs> F-bomb, like, kind of got away from me there. Don't <laughs> mind me. <laughs> no, I really, I think therapy, honestly, I think, I we don't talk about stuff. Like, in, in my family, you didn't talk about anything. And above all, you were polite. And that's not to like knock on my mom and dad, but like we were raised to be polite and to think of everybody else's situation and feelings in life other than your, your own. Mm. And so because of that, like I was just super not in touch with my own feelings at all, which I mean, that sounds lame, I guess in a way. And that's the first time I've ever actually verbalized that. But if you aren't, if you don't care about yourself and you don't speak out about, you know, things that are happening to you or how you're feeling, you're going to become a really miserable person. And then it comes out later in life and oh, you hurt absolutely. a lot of people, which is what I did. Yeah. Those are the, those are the kind of things that start generational curses. Right yeah. There. Yeah. And you know, I like, as a kid, I, I had like, we have an amazing family and I had a great situation growing up. Like, really and truly had the dream. Like, our parents traveled. Like, I was raised overseas. Like, got to study other languages and, and go to amazing places and, and, you know, be among really incredible humans and learn, you know, about the world. Hmm. And then, you know, you have you have something that happens to you when you're really young that screws you up and you don't talk about it and it just festers. And then you become a miserable human being. And Even if you forget it, it doesn't, the trauma stays. Yeah. And that's a really interesting thing. You know, yesterday was actually, it's funny. Yesterday was actually the anniversary of me leaving my rapist and, um, like my body totally remembered and I didn't remember and it's been over a decade and like, I didn't remember, but I woke up and I hurt and I was upset and I couldn't figure out why I was off. And my sister and I are super in tune and she like, she like kind of, Gave me a cup of coffee and was like, you okay? What's up? And I was like, I don't know what's wrong. And then I figured it out. And I was like, ah, freaking body remembers. It does every time. Yeah. It'll like certain days, like I've had to look back through like diaries and stuff and remember like when certain times are. And there'll be times where it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm in pain. Like my, like I'm just miserable. I can't figure out why. Oh, that was a bad day. Yeah. That was not a good. Is it super insensitive and crazy for me to ask you to kind of like, Tell us about that. No, I mean, not, no. Obviously, you don't have to get into any extreme detail, but no. I just know that from it's, what I've been told about you from other people, that's what led you to kind of where you are. It, it kind of is, and it's funny because I never really thought about it that way. And and uh, t trigger warning, I know people hate those sorts of things, but it used to really upset me when somebody would say something and I wouldn't be ready for it. So, like, if I use the word 
to describe something. If you're listening to this and mm-hmm. you struggle with that right now, like don't listen to it. Um, no, when I was, when I was 14, um, a family friend, um, something bad happened and I was in, in fear. It was, it was very interesting to see what fear does to a little girl and like something not happening, but knowing that the person is trying to do something to you and that you're having to try and stay alive or get away from them or protect yourself as a 14 year old and, and, um, thinking that the possibility of dying or something really horrific happening to you, um, especially like as, as a 14 year old, like I was homeschooled. We didn't have sex education. Like (laughs) if I'm being totally honest, like that was a whole new world. And when your first experience with anything sexual is, um, violent, it really changes you as a human and your view of it is warped like super, super warped. And because our family kind of makeup was that you just tough through everything. Like I, I so respect that about my family. Like they are incredibly strong. Um, they get through anything humans and that doesn't translate well to being a little girl and not talking about when somebody's trying to hurt you. Um, and so I just didn't, they knew something was wrong. Like I came home, it was a, it was a trip. And I came home, got off the airplane, and my dad raised his hands up and went, hi, honey. And I, like, instantly, it was the first time I remember, like, not knowing what my body was doing and going, how the hell did I get down here? And I, like, dropped to the ground and covered up my head and just wanted to get the hell away from him. And, like, I've been a daddy's girl my entire life. Like, that dude, he's he's amazing. He's my buddy. And I didn't want to be around him. And I was starting to work full time, um, and travel, uh, when I was 14, some amazing people heard me sing on an open mic and were like, Hey, what do you want to do with your life? And I was like, I want to be an opera singer or a bullfighter. Or, I don't know, like, you know, like take over the world. Like I want to do amazing stuff. And they were like, cool. Well, we think you'd be a great musician and we'd love to support you. You know, We'd love to invest in you. And they helped me record my first album. And we had no idea what we were doing. We did it as a family. But I started working at 14, like making a living for myself. And it was just throwing yourself into work and having all the stresses of work. But then I was around men. And it was it was horrible. Like I, I would cry before I had to go on stage. Didn't want to have to go be in front of people. I loved singing. I loved writing. I loved performing. Like I loved all of that. But afterwards you would meet people and these great, lovely people that just loved your music would come up and these big guys would hug me and they'd be so excited to be like, Oh, I love your music, sweetie. And then I'd go back to the green room and just absolutely lose it. And it was just a really kind of sucky way to live as a little girl. And, um, and then, you know, when you're, when you're impacted that way, when you're younger, it kind of, it does this imprinting thing and you're more open to things down the road. And, uh, I got into a, uh, relationship with somebody that you, you kind of, um, abusive relationship is an interesting term for me. And so is domestic violence. Cause the person I was with like to torture people and it's kind of hard when you know people want to put abuse into a box and be like okay so this is what it is this is how we address it and like for me um like I was locked in a garage for three days at one point and tortured and that's not a cool life experience and when you don't feel like you can tell anybody and you just internalize it and you work harder and you put your head down and you're like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get through life. Eventually you get to the point that you're like, all right, I'm done. Peace out. I'm cool. And you just, you get to where you just don't want to have to wake up and deal with it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was, it was a weird progression that I think is, is something that we don't talk about related to abuse is like how many people 
struggle with things that have happened to them as children. And you don't even realize certain things are wrong or that you are in fear at certain points. Like I talked to so many women that are like, I didn't even realize at the time. It's like, I didn't realize. I didn't realize at all. That sounds so dumb, but like, I didn't know. <laughs> like you just, it happens so easily. And then, um, and then you figure out that life is worth living and you stick around and it gets 10 times better. <laughs> Yeah. That was a really long, drawn out explanation. Sorry, that's the first time I've ever like talked in detail about it. No, I, I'm sorry I put you on the spot to no, do that. No, I it liked was, it. It was cool. I, uh, I'm usually not left speechless, but that, I mean, that was a lot. Sorry. In a, no, in a great way. He's going to need therapy after this. <laughs> no, it's, it's, just, it's just interesting, right? Like, <clears throat> it's like, okay. So Ooh, got that up. Here's what I didn't know. <laughs> like, do th the wiggle. This is what I didn't know. I thought the first thing was the abuse. I wasn't ready for the second part. And then you kind of told me that. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, this is a lot. Sorry. Yeah. This is a lot. Like, I'm just, I'm trying to piece together how somebody could go through this and then that and then be this just freaking awesome person that I'm hanging out with right now. I was like, I, you have to do so much work. It's all an act. It's all an act. I am a, just the worst human in the entire world. I'm so mean. <laughs> I'm so angry. You did channel that earlier. I'm vicious. Me. I am. And I try and tell people that like, I am terrifying. I am, be intimidated. I am scary. <laughs> I tried to tell a guy that the other day and he laughed at me. <laughs> it's like, no, really be scared of me. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, and he does that. He's just like, what is wrong with you? I want to be scary. Yeah, I do too. It sucks, huh? Yeah. Nobody takes me seriously. It's being terrified. Yeah, I get it. Just, 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 <laughs> Although, Ty, you've told me I'm scary many times. I can see how you could be intimidating. Yeah, maybe. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so, but. At times. At times. Yeah, the thing is, is you've seen me freak out, like, I on, on people that have nothing to do with the podcast, the other business. You've seen me freak out. That, oh. That's a different thing. Really? Very different. Is it terrifying? You've seen me yes. freak out on it, on employees from the other company i've also seen you freak out on people calling you yeah really my sister and i always giggle because everybody always thinks i'm like the really scary one and that she's like the super like i don't know they always get us exactly backwards and like she's terrifying <laughs> she looks really sweet and then like she's really scary like she's actually she kind of scares me <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i don't know i just don't think that you can take people shit no matter what, like, do not allow people to no. give you shit. Not anymore. Not, I'm talking about real shit, not like fun, like, haha, we're all buddies. But like, like if you have a business and yeah. someone tries to push you around or like threaten you. Yes. It's like you stop that shit right there. So I didn't understand that for the longest time. And that's actually been something like the last couple of years. Actually, probably if I'm being realistic, more the last like six months that I've finally figured out is that like, it's back to that politeness as a kid that I don't want to make people uncomfortable. And then when you realize, no, screw that. If you're uncomfortable because you're trying to cross my boundary, that's not my problem. Exactly. My boundaries are now strong enough that if you make me uncomfortable, I'm going to call you on that. You're not allowed to cross this line. This is, this is my boundary. If you step over it, I'm going to let you know nicely because, well, because I want to be nice. And then if it's still an issue, then I'm going to get pissed. Yeah. No, then you absolutely. Back off. Yeah. But, and people like that. People get like, People, people need get boundaries. Off. People get off on trying to fuck with people in that way. Yeah. And you know, I don't know. Social media also has made, and I hate to quote a really generic meme, but it's made people really comfortable with not being punched in the face more for what they say. Like I have people constantly that are pissed at me because I've wanted to make myself a better human and they put you in a box and you're supposed to stay in this box. You get attacked on Instagram a lot. I get more like... Not in the same way that I see other women be attacked. I think people are more pissed off that I'm not what they want me to be, which is um, an image that they like to build up in their minds. And nobody actually really knows me. That's the thing. Like my privacy is very, very important to me and or has been mostly because of safety reasons. And I've kind of gotten to where it's like, ah, sorry guys, I can't live. I can't live my life to make you guys comfortable. Um, Which is the problem when you start building up a, a social media following is they yeah. have all these weird expectations probably, right? Yeah. It like, it was really funny when I first started trying to get into shape. 
Like I woke up one morning and went, you are just like not the human that I thought you would be. What the hell? Like you're, you're, you're just drifting by right now and I'm going to change my life. It's like, okay, change my life. So proud of like all the things I'd done. And then like these girls would comment and be like, you know, I really thought you were body positive. It's really sad that you said, you know, that you had to even mention that you lost weight, you know, since you did this, you know, like example, the long range shooting deal. Like, and I'm like, dude, it did help that I lost weight. I can shoot a lot better. Do you know how many muscles it takes to shoot something over a mile? A lot. It takes a lot of dang muscles to do that. It takes a lot of concentration. It's like, I'm a better person because I started focusing on bettering myself and that pisses you off. You're a weak person. That's why that pisses you off is because there is some area of your life that you feel unfulfilled in and you feel lacking in and you don't like it when people hold up a mirror in a way because they're trying to better themselves. Oh, I mean, and, and health and fitness is like the number one thing that people get pissed about. It's a, and it's so not, pissed. and it's not something that like, it's to me, like I'm not where I want to be. Like I obviously have goals, but oh my gosh, my brain, like I have focused for so long on trying to heal my brain literally. And when you combine that with trying to heal your body and you treat your body kindly, you're unstoppable. There's a reason why people like Joe Rogan are fitness freaks. Successful people care about their bodies. And I want to be successful in everything I do. Even if it's flipping a burger, I want to be, I want to be the best at it that I can be. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like everything for me starts at the gym, at the gym every yeah. morning and your day. diet. I mean, it starts with the diet. Yeah. And I love making people uncomfortable. Like we go eat and I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. But hey, don't go get in butter. Hey, uh, no bun on that. Yeah. People are like, you only live once. That's my favorite. You don't ever have any fun. I have lots of fun. Yeah. I have lots of fun. And I do, I do have to have a weird balance though, because I can become very Spartan in my mentality. Like I do, I am naturally like more that way because like that's how my dad is I am 110 percent it's no there's no halfway and I can be like insane and never come up for air and then then you go a little crazy so sometimes I've got to be like okay I'll have a dessert you know now or oh totally I definitely like do live that. and enjoy life like but not yeah as long time. as it doesn't it, like it doesn't inhibit the goals yeah like, but I think like if you have a set goal on a set time and you don't mess with that no once it's done no do what you want to do maintain whatever but in that period of time like you don't because all you're doing is delaying your progress yeah well and that's the thing as well is that i feel like it's for me it's not for anybody else i mean maybe that maybe the result is nice for other people because then they don't have to look at me <laughs> but like, <laughs> or they get to look at you you could to, use the they, you could use the glass half full side get of that to, absolutely but like i like everything that I do now it's it's for me and if other people don't like it like they get to go along for the ride but I I feel like that's another thing about social media that you it's easy to fall into that trap is that you live for other people how would this picture look who the hell cares what that picture would look like are you having fun what are you doing that day are you enjoying yourself or did you just go get on your horse to take the picture which like anybody who's been on social media we're all guilty of taking you know doing that I'm sure but like there's a weird line that it, like it's blurred so easily that by design that's how they keep yes. you hooked on it yes it's <clears> really <throat> i switched how i exist on social media and i'm sure it screws up my business a lot because i get to where i just can't handle it like somebody told me they wanted to rape and skin my dog the other day and that they were going to come find me and kill me like Wait, same that, person or two different people? Same person. It was super weird. What kind of dog it was do you have? A blue healer. He's hot in the truck. He's super nice. He just wants to get along. My God, the dog didn't do anything to anybody. First of all, you're going to be trying that with a blue healer. Yeah. Also, bite I'll, your dick off, buddy. Also, I'll shoot you before you get close to like, screw John with me. Don't screw with my dog. Don't screw with my dog. Yeah, she's going to go John yeah, Wick on you. I will so go John Wick on your ass. Those are great movies, by the way. Those are like my oh, favorite. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah, way those are Legally Blonde. Those are Legally Blonde, best movies hand to And stand. you just lost me. It's potty break time. <laughs> potty break time. 
<laughs> I totally lost him at Elwood's. <laughs> May I have more coffee as well? Is that allowed? Yeah. Yes. Sweet. Just in case you skip the intro, there is going to be a second part to this. Keep a lookout next week for part two of this ultra long podcast. This has been The Gage, hosted by me, Chance Conrado, produced and edited by our guy Ty Yeager. Shout out to the executive producers, Dustin Pointer and Cody Denton. Marketing and content produced by Riley Chone. Our theme song is by Shay Ashire and the Night Howlers. Make sure to rate and review this podcast as well as follow The Gage on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to The Gage wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys next time.